Hi guys, it's Sarah with Grassroots Evolution, and I'm here today to bring you a monthly message for the sign of Capricorn for April 2020. So guys, take what you feel does resonate with you on a soul level, disregard the rest, go about your day, my friends, and know that no matter what messages we receive through the cards or whatever spirit has to offer today, it's still up to you guys, your active free will and the choices you make and the steps you take, and that is honestly personal freedom, right? So it's going to take your active free will and your active role in whatever transformation you're going through this month or at any point right so for all my subscribers guys thank you guys for the bottom of my heart for being here it means the world to me and if you're new to my channel welcome at the end if you feel like this has resonated with you or touched your soul in some way please feel free to subscribe join the journey with me help me build my channel because it would be awesome to have you along this ride so i'm going to just ask archangel michael and my team of light to jump in to guide guard bless and protect myself this reading any of you who would ask for it as well as i would just remind you if you are calling in your angels or your guides to ask that they're here for your highest good much like i will ask them to use me as the clearest channel and to only deliver messages for our highest good we don't want um, messages coming in ways that we don't understand as well so we would ask for the clearest way possible so i am going to pull a message as an overarching energy for april 2020 you get the ace of swords and I tried to record this video earlier and the eight of wands came out and it came out twice it came out in the pre-shuffle and that's like a quick instant kind of thing it could be travel it could also be um, new insights new thoughts but I also feel like it could be communication with this and you get the ace of swords so this is a new reading but why I mention it in that one is because I was picking up on communication as well so here we have new thoughts processes new ways of thinking new conversations let's get a little bit more can you tell me about this ace of swords please you get the nine of pentacles and this is understanding being self-made, also understanding that um, this is wish fulfillment in the now, right? That you have everything that you need in the now. It's how you use it, right? You have all the tools you need to be successful in this world. How did you use it? How do you use it? As well as we have here the King of Swords. I'm not going to read reversals. He was in the reverse, but this deck is pretty messed up in terms of that. So... What I would say is, if there's any blocks, though, if there's been anything stopping you from being at your highest vibration, there may be a good um, kind of get in touch with you here with this Nine of Pentacles. What do you stand for, right? What are your core values? And she's holding on to her golden goose. And what I heard, heard is there could be some long-term goals. This could be long-term relationship. This could also be you. And what is yours? What do you own? What have you built? And really contemplating and thinking this. This could also be within partnership as well. There could be you. Often the Nine of Pentacles is considered a single person as well. Regardless of whether you're in partnership or not. I feel like this is a real understanding of you as an individual. As an autonomous being. And the way that you think. The way that you speak. The way that you communicate with others. And we have here as she's eating. She's bloodied her dress. So times where um, you know potentially... Our mouths have been cutting as well as one of the things I, I'm hearing. But you see all these different papers. He can't get it right, right? Or she, the king. This is in this case the king of swords. Is writing and writing and writing. Trying to just make it perfect. And back here as well we have the stallion and they've all turned into butterflies because once we are able to express ourselves, maybe in written word it may be a little bit also easier to communicate and from a more grounded and stable place if you take some time in quiet contemplation to think things through write them out before you have these kinds of conversations just a minute guys okay i'm back so i'm going to get a little more clarification here on the ace of swords as well as um, I'll clarify each card, I feel like. So another clarification here for this Ace of Swords, please. What is the communication or insight? Could have a fire sign in your life, Leo, Aries, or Sagittarius, guys. Or um, as well as we get the Two of Wands here in a decision. This could also be with a masculine and feminine aspect here. Needing to use our drive, use our creativity as well. And... Um, some of you as well there's a heavy air here but i feel like it's about putting your plans into action using this queen of wands energy to 
kind of look in the mirror, make decisions that you would be comfortable as well with. And some of this as well as maybe assessing your own actions. Can you tell me about the Nine of Pentacles, please? Seeing ways in, in our past too where we may have been a little harsh. You get the Tower here and the Ace of Wands. So definitely a lot of fiery passion and a lot of doing energy, right? Because the wands are the things that we can do. And this is, I feel like, funneling our creative energy into a project and into decisions that would make us right with our soul. And to bring the changes, not to be afraid of the tower, not be able to not be afraid of what crumbles and what structures no longer exist within our lives, but rather than looking at it how we are now in this newfound place that I stand in, in this newfound world, what changes am I going to make so that I no longer remain stagnant so that I, I can blossom and bloom? And I feel like as well, whatever change that happens, whatever is going here, it's being held close to someone's heart. So let's get a little more about this King of Swords, please. Thank you. You get the Justice card. And this is, again, I like this because it's the house of cards. It's about to, is it going to stand or is it going to fall? And I heard it's a lot about the height, the width, the structure that it's laid on and it's built on. If we build something from a strong foundation, here's the four of swords resting and the five of wands, an internal hurdle. If we build something from um, a stable foundation, we're not going to be worried that it's going to crumble. But if we throw it up quickly and haphazardly, and we don't think things through, and we're hasty in our decision-making process, um, you're going to create more hurdles along the way. So what I'm feeling like, because this is the overarching energy being in a mental space, that in order to bring justice to whatever situation you is encountering or is taking place, one thing we need to do is quiet our mind and quiet our thought space to come from it stable as well, to ground ourselves, to be at this highest vibration of thought so that we're making the movements that are best in our best interest as well and something as well that's going to bring us a lot of love and light. Just a second, guys. Apologies, guys. My kids are home and I can hear them doing stuff that not supposed to be doing. Anyway, so with this, what I'm saying is it's going to bring you a lot of love and light, meaning that if you're making and doing the decisions that are right for you on your path, they're not going to cause any emotional or um, disturbances, and you're not going to have any of this, which is the five of wands, internal struggles. So if you're having trouble, if you're feeling like justice hasn't been served in a situation, Take some time and stand up at a little higher perspective if there's fighting going on around you as well. I feel like it's like, well, you back out of that. They're showing me the number two here as well. If you can see this, I'm not sure if you can, but there's a two on that. And it's because it takes two people as well as this two of wands. It takes a decision. So it takes two people making a decision if this was in partnership, to have communications and to have discussions um, from the most clear-headed point of view and in a point of view that isn't going to be damaging to another. And if there's places where we have been damaging, to take a look in that in the mirror, to make a choice to be a little bit different. And as well as here, this could be new, new endeavors, right? New things that we're thinking about doing. So I'm going to take a message from... The Sacred Rebels Oracle. And just see what spirit would have us know of these cards on this table. Alrighty. Spirit. Do okay. you have anyone know here? Love you, mommy. Love you too, honey. Alright. So what would we have anyone know here? About this new endeavor going forward? What is some helpful advice? There we go. And you get number 15, which is big, bold vision. And this is about rebirth. This is also about using our throat chakra. If you see down here, it reminds me of Isis and the scarab beetle. As well as 
There's the, I think it's the honeybee above here. So we have a scarab beetle about rebirth and a honeybee here, fertility and spreading ideas from flower to flower. And being at our third eye means that we're also being able to connect with our guides, being able to connect with a bigger, bolder vision that we may currently have in this world or have thought about. Some of this stuff could be quick insights as well, quick new understandings that you received through downloads as well. And what I'm hearing is creating a sacred space to obtain those, as well as to realize that what comes from here, this is sacred space. Our throat chakra is sacred space. Our heart chakra as well is sacred space. If you can see, she has this sacred geometry going from her kind of the heart area up into the throat. And this is also pulling information down, allowing change as well from what I'm what I'm hearing with this tower change to come from our vocal cords right change to come from the ways that we speak as well as I'm going to take read you the book I don't have the book with me I'm sorry guys it's so unorganized what you want wants you I feel like this is also the law of attraction that what you want what you're holding so dear to your heart it wants you too just a second guys I apologize for all okay I'm back so, I know why I found the book. So, I'm going to tell you a little healing process it, it brings. So, this could be for you something that if you're having trouble you, releasing any of the blocks or you're having trouble with this two of wands stuck in kind of a shadow contemplation making any decisions, here's something that you can say to help release that. I release all blocks to my vision. I release all beliefs, conscious or unconscious, stored in my body or mind that would have me belittle or minimize myself out of fear or ignorance. I choose to be big, bold, and bright, to vision with my heart and receive all the genius of the universe in supporting that vision and coming to life. So be it. So I'm going to say it one more time for you guys, and this may be something helpful to say in the mirror. I release all blocks to my vision. I release all beliefs, unconscious or conscious, stored in my body or mind that would have me belittle or minimize myself out of fear or ignorance. I choose to be bold, big and bright, to vision with my heart and receive all the genius of the universe in supporting that vision in coming to life, so be it. So if you're receiving a bigger vision through your third eye, if you are receiving information down through your crown, and this could be first off finding ways to speak about it. Some of you, I know writing is difficult. If hit record, channel yourself. You know, see what see what you come up with. This could be stream of consciousness writing as well, but not limiting yourself in what you can do by an outdated belief system that says no, nah, I can't do it. Put your mind to it and bring the changes in this world so that you can be self-made and you can establish something from yourself in a way that is clearly thought out and you are, you know, you're holding this dear. Because remember, what the other card, wherever it is, is what you want, wants you. This big, bold vision, whatever you're being pulled to, this is also your, your calling and the world wants you to do it because you're the only person who can. So the last message I have for you will be from the, um, this is by Rebecca Campbell, and it's the, I'm going to take the top too, it is the Work Your Light Oracle. And this same card came out with boundaries for Aquarius. I have shuffled these decks very well. Where you need to establish better boundaries and keepers of the earth, you are not alone. Ancient ancestors stand beside you, and some of you, whatever insight you're receiving if you have information if you have knowledge carried down through generation of generation ancestral tribal information tribal knowledge stars this as well as your star systems i heard palladians that honor this because there may be a bigger picture and there's coding and imprinting as well as what i feel like that you will be receiving so open this um it receive this with openness as well as know that we have eagles here there is communication with the divine pay attention to what the clouds look like where are your thoughts as well as it looks like there are whales and dolphins everything being interconnectedness i also heard atlantis some of you with these dolphins and the whales but like the sonar the ability as well to understand frequency 
and you do have under that was conscious connections conscious connections with each other with yourself with the divine but really also with this establishing boundaries is we can set um, energetic boundaries from ourselves as well so if we're empathic and we're feeling other people if we're not quite feeling ourselves, or there's a lot of energy in the air so take the time to set those energetic boundaries imagine yourself in a bubble get some energy work done and as well as say no if there's a situation that is over burdering burdering oh my god burdening burdening there we go um burdening you or if there's a person in your life who's overburdening you this is you really setting these healthy boundaries so that they're not getting involved they're not getting in the way of your big bold vision and remember again that what you want wants you this law of attraction and it takes you to step forward it takes you being in high vibration and you also being in a relaxed state a mental state to do this so I feel like I'm going to pull one more card as the last advice and I will say goodbye to you guys, Capricorn. Thank you. To Irma, Irmara, where are you being called to journey to? Some of you as well, this is during astral travel and inner temple devo devotion. Tune into the portal of your heart. Really connecting with yourself here. Setting the boundaries so you know that the information that you're feeling is yours. And knowing, here this says you're not alone. Ancient ancestors stand behind you. Where are you being called to? Wherever you're being led to look into, like there's Stonehenge here. I was getting Atlantis. There's so many other different things. But whatever your curiosity is peaked with right now, go for it. There may be something really important for you to learn, as well as it may be some coded knowledge to help wake you up and just remember, hey, there was more to this purpose. I love you too, and I love all of you, and I hope you guys have a great week. Oh, bye now.